<laughs> so, well, thanks so much for the hint up here. Um, you know, great introduction. Um, I'm here, you know, with Kelly, Governor Kelly, um, who is not only a military spouse, and thank you for that. Uh, we, all, we never give you um, all credit enough here. Um, and also someone who is deeply in knowledge with, you know, returning to work and all of the all of the everyday struggles that a military uh, spouse deals with when it comes to securing their own career and personal development. So thanks for being here. Um, I would love it if you can you know, begin this conversation, um, Kelly, by telling us a little bit about yourself and your career journey as a military spouse. Just a little bit about you and then also about Hire Heroes USA. Yeah, absolutely. So um, thank you guys for having me here. I'm super excited to be here. So yeah, so I've been a military spouse for um, seven, eight years now. I, I got married in 2013. I can't do the math there. <laughs> I should I should know. Uh, but my husband is active duty Air Force. Um, we are originally from Pennsylvania. I didn't foresee my life being a military spouse. I'm very career focused, you know, graduated college and, um, you know, during college, I met my husband. He was like, I'm joining the military. We got married. I actually graduated college, got married and moved cross country all in one week. <laughs> I, was wow. crazy. I was crazy. Um, thinking back at on it now, I'm like, what was going on? But, um, yeah, so we moved our first duty station was Tucson, Arizona. So from Pennsylvania to Tucson, um, and yeah, my background is um, in business management and human resources. I was a recruiter. Um, and then, yeah, so that was our first duty station. I was able to find employment pretty quickly there, landed into payroll um, processing, which I didn't love. Uh, but then also I became a full-time graduate student while working full-time. Uh, so I got my MBA and then we got word that we're PCSing again. So, so yeah, so I was excited. I thought, you know, I am set. I have my MBA. We're moving to Raleigh, Durham. I hear there's lots of opportunities there. Um, and I, like I said, I'm a very career focused individual and months turned into months and I was unemployed for a very long time. Um, and it was just the hardest time in my life. I just put a lot of focus and pressure on myself to find meaningful employment. I, you know, and as a military spouse, we are not solely looking for jobs just for the financial reason. Um, you know, when we move to a location, we're, we're usually all by ourselves. So we don't have that network. So, you know, building relationships and friendships, that was huge too in finding a job. And it's hard to to make friends when you're out of college and older. Um, so, so yeah, I struggled with that and I really just wanted to meet people and, you know, work for a company that I loved. And, um, so it was a hard time in my life and, um, I stumbled upon Hire Heroes USA and their services. And I actually registered for their services and I was a client of Hire Heroes USA um, and they helped me throughout my whole job search. So just to tell you a little bit more about what Higher Heroes USA does is we're a national nonprofit um, that helps veterans and military spouses in their career search. So the bread and butter of our service is our resume. Um, so once you register for Higher Heroes USA, um, and you could do that at www.hireheroesusa.org, um, you will be assigned a transition specialist. And if you're a military spouse, we have a team of our serving spouses program team. Um, they are military spouses themselves. So yeah, so register, get connected with them. They will write your resume for you. They will take a look at what you're doing in your job search. And they have all the tricks and tips of what you're doing wrong and how to improve your job search. And they're just going to be someone in your corner helping you along, giving you the resources. Um, I didn't know that this service existed. I didn't know that military spouses can take advantage of this. Um, so I kind of just fell in my lap and I networked myself into the organization. And I've been here for six years at Higher Heroes USA. Um, and I helped launch our serving spouses program in 2018 to just provide military spouses the best resources in their job search and to help them land that meaningful career. Um, you know, it, it's been amazing to be able to give back to my community um, of military spouses. Like, it's being a military spouse is hard. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. 
Um, and, you know, just finding a job is another aspect that military spouses struggle with. So, so yeah, so if you are struggling to find employment, definitely register for our services and we're happy to, you know, get you signed up and um, assigned out to someone who's going to be there for you and um, help you along in that job search. I, I love what you said. I think that it is so true, right? I mean, you're moving, your situations can be strenuous as a military spouse. As you said, in one week, your life changed, right? You went from yeah. like, most people will go through that stuff in two years and you just did it in one week and, you know, having to come in and not only it's finding work, but finding your own community, finding people to rely upon, finding people to vent with and finding people to just, you know, hold you together. It's so important. So I love what you guys are doing Hire Heroes USA. Um, I put it in the chat. It's www.hireheroesusa.org. They'll assign you someone, right? They'll help you with your resume and any coaching that you need. And I love that you started that program at 2018. It sounds like, you know, you came in as a candidate and you stayed in as a program manager. So you must have caused quite the impression. Um, <laughs> that's incredible. Um, you know, let me ask you this final question. Um, we kind of tends to know everything you said. Uh, it seems like there's a lot more awareness and support for family spouses, for, for you know, military spouses these days. With that in mind, do you recommend informing hiring managers and recruiters of your military, military spouse status and application process? Yeah, so this question comes up a lot with clients. Um, and I will, usually I'm the one on a panel saying a different answer than <laughs> others. So sometimes on the panel, you know, we'll have military spouse advocates that say, scream from the rooftop that you're a military spouse. Um, I usually take it back a few steps. Uh, if you're not comfortable with sharing with an employer that you're a military spouse, you do not have to. Um, you know, it's illegal to ask a, in an interview, are you married? Ask about your spouse. Um, so if you're not disclosing that information, you don't have to, you know, give it up. Um, but what that said is we've made great strides in corporate America with veteran hiring initiatives, military spouse hiring initiatives. So I've seen such positivity come around it. And one of the, the facts of the matter is, is military spouses are amazing hires. Um, and usually when someone hires a military spouse, they realize they're getting such a hard worker and someone who could deal with stress. I don't know of anyone who could deal with stress better than military spouses. Um, I had my first child and my husband got deployed two weeks later <laughs> and I was by myself and I was like, I need to figure this out. Um, so this doesn't really normally happen to, you know, civilians. So we got to figure things out all the time. We're great problem solvers. Um, so usually when a, a company hires a military spouse, they're like, wow, this person's amazing. We want to hire more. So I, I see that trajectory going positively. Um, but with that said, just like everything else, you know, there are some people who don't understand the military spouse lifestyle. You'll get hiring managers, you know, that never had anyone in the military. They don't know much about the military and they think that you are going to, you know, have to leave in a year. You know, your spouse's career is going to take you to a different location. So why am I spending all this money to hire you when you're just going to leave anyway? Um, so that's something definitely military spouses get burned in the hiring process and they say, hey, I'm a military spouse just because of the stigma around military spouses. Um, but one thing that is came positively out of, you know, the global pandemic is the remote work and mm -hmm. the companies changing to remote work. So that is also something positive that we have on our side for once, um, you know, the landscape has completely changed. Um, so remote work has been huge for military spouses. Um, so definitely like if the comp if the work is remote, like I, I would disclose that I'm a military spouse anyway, because it's not going to matter. Um, but as you know, as you know, some jobs are in person. Um, so you might not want to disclose that. And then also if the company has a military spouse hiring initiative there, just do your research. You know, when I interviewed with Hire Heroes USA, I saw that they want to support military spouses. So I screamed from the rooftops, hey, I'm a military spouse, and they hired me. Um, so it's just all about research and what you're comfortable with. Yeah, I love what you said. So I, I think it's so true. I mean, the, the hard worker, the resilience and the leadership skills that you guys you just have to get in right almost immediately right after taking the I do. Um, you know, I think that these are great transfers for the new 
workforce, which is remote work. I think that, you know, great alignment for these openings out there for, you know, work from home roles. I think that there's definitely tons of misnomers out there, as you said, but I feel like this new movement definitely has to somehow like exploit these great, you know, skills that the, the military spouses are bringing to the workforce. Um, I like that you said about researching companies programs because that is so true. It is not said enough. And also pitch yourself, right? Like pitch your transferable skills. Like this is what I bring to the table. These are my transferable skills. These are, I don't like to call it soft skills. I like to call them active skills, the personality traits. And this is why I'm gonna be the best hire you can have. Don't be afraid of voicing yourself, right? Like you would do with any work, any work or any job interview. This takes me to the next question. It is definitely um, extremely common for military spouses to want to work from home and understandably so, right? What advice would you give to military spouses pursuing work from home opportunities, especially with this new workforce, right? The post COVID remote like boom that has happened. Yeah, and as I mentioned, like I've, such, I've seen such positive change in companies going remote. One thing I wanna mention is if you're currently working for a company, and you get word that your husband or wife has the PCS, don't just quit, put in a proposal. If you, I mean, obviously there's positions that it can't, you have to be in person, but if it's a role that you can do remotely, put in a proposal with your, your boss, like, Hey, I'm moving, but this is how I could take this job remotely. Um, and before even having to job search, you might not even have to, your current job can travel with you. Um, but definitely you just got to put in the work and show how this job can be done remotely. Number one, um, number two is looking for remote work. Um, there are so many ways to look for remote work. Sometimes it's overwhelming, um, use different sites like power to fly, um, use different job boards uh, that are specifically for remote employment that companies are advertising on there. And one other thing is your resume. Um, the resume is not the end all be all of a job search, but it's it's important. Um, typically, employers are going to look at your resume. Um, so make sure you show on your resume that, hey, I have um, experience working these different platforms. We have all used Zoom, you know, but you might not, it, it's, it's used so much that you might not even think to add to your resume. But guess what? When you're working a, a remote job, employers want to see that you have that already knowledge and ability to work these different platforms, show aut autonomy when you worked by yourself in your resume, um, you know, list out if you held other virtual positions, list that on your resume. Um, so mm -hmm. those are just some tips. And then also um, a lot of companies are advertising. I mean, this is all kind of new. So a, a lot of companies are advertising um, under different names. So I see a lot of remote positions and then also the keywords telecommute. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it, anywhere USA. So use these search terms when you're searching for positions on these job boards because companies are listing them under, you know, all types of kind of keywords there. Yeah, and also, you know, what's funny is that a lot of, well, not funny, but it's relevant. A lot of companies are called returnship and that applies to moms coming to yeah. the workforce and that applies also to, um, you know, any military spouses or actually even veteran spouses that had to start the workforce because it wasn't really like the work from home movement wasn't as strong. So returnship is great. There's companies like Workday, they have this um, thing called opportunity or ramps. And, you know, there's companies like, there's big companies that have these types of like, you know, type, types of programs in the keywords are returnship, um, apprenticeship, but it's just broad used. And, you know, anyway, I would strongly suggest that people should contact those recruiters as well as I, I love what you said about putting that work from home proposal and the fractional proposal is important. Anyone who's listening in the audience who's from a senior role and above, there is this new movement called fractional leadership because a lot of women in the workforce are quitting a lot across the board. It's called the great breakup. I don't know if you're familiar with the McKinsey study that was done about this. So there's a ton of leadership roles that are that, that being done 
in a fractional manner, which means that it's shared across the board with other folks that have similar backgrounds, right? So like leadership is taken on a team standpoint as opposed to an individual standpoint. And I think that's great to alleviate a lot of things that are happening in our everyday lives, right? In this new world. So thanks for your response. Um, as military spouse, how could one build a long lasting career? This is super important, right? A lot of women feel themselves pressured to either stay stagnant in the same role to just get whatever they, they can, you know, get whatever role they can find, or, you know, they feel that they have to quit the force and then come back later. So what would be your best advice with this situation? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, I always like to say, don't let your military spouse status discourage you. Let your knowledge, skills, and abilities speak for mm -hmm. themselves. And then also we have tons of clients that just because they're moving all around, um, they will just accept any, any first job that gives them an offer. And then that keeps them in under employment and the career trajectory that they go on is now under employment. Um, so they're not being fairly compensated to what, you know, their knowledge, skills, and abilities that they can be. So I would like, always like to say, like, believe in yourself, let your knowledge, skills, and abilities speak, your education. Um, I like to, you know, our, our team of serving spouses, uh, transition specialists, often are like the hype people, like, we're hyping you up. Don't settle for something um, less than you deserve. Like, if you're qualified for higher level positions, apply to those. Don't, don't, you know, let the job description scare you, um, you know, just go out there and um, don't, don't accept a position that's lower than what you deserve. 100%, you know, I feel that as uh, female identified people entering the workforce, it's it's known that women look at job descriptions and they feel that just because they don't meet 100% of the role, they won't apply to it. But men apply to roles, even if they're half qualified. Mm -hmm. We need to lose that fear and we need to play up our skills, right? I love what you said too about finding community, power to fly or hire here as you would say, they have great people out there who will be more than happy to be mentors and coaches. And also the conversations that we provide like these that can provide you with knowledge and a sense of, you know, education to bring out your best skills. So I think that that's definitely great. Um, another point that you touched on that I wanna highlight that I thought was super important is the underemployment and undercompensation factor. Um, we can't, we cannot accept just whatever role, right? Especially in women in um, that are military spouses, that just cannot happen. That's definitely contributing to a statistic that can be counterintuitive to the development of the female workforce. So super important that you said that and I'm so glad that you highlighted it. Um, Let's talk a little bit about that resume, the story tells, and also things like gaps, right? Like we were just talking about women needing to leave the workforce, like you did, for example, when you gave birth and you, you know, or if you have to tend to a special matter because you're the head of the household while your um, husband is deployed. These gaps, they can be super counterintuitive across the board. It's been happening now, especially with layoffs. A lot of people that have these gaps are not getting picked up in the front of the row and it's discouraging. How can we, and especially women that are military spouses, explain these gaps during interviews or even in their cover letter, right? Which is the first thing that a recruiter sees. Yeah, so uh, I also have seen positive um, changes in this. Just because of COVID, people were laid off. Mm. People had mm. to take time off. Long are the days that people are staying at companies for 10 years plus. Um, you know, we are taking time off to care for our family. And especially as military spouses, sometimes you don't have a choice. You know, your husband or wife is deployed. Um, you need to care for the children. Um, you take time off. Sometimes you're overseas. You can't find employment overseas. So you take that time off. Um, but I always just recommend to be open about it. And then also, um, you know, military spouses are really civically engaged. And a lot of times, you know, my clients, will call me and they'll say, well, I didn't do anything. Like I raised my children, um, I homeschooled them, I volunteered, but I wasn't being paid anything. And I'm like, I don't care. Um, I don't care if you weren't being paid, put that on your resume. Yes. That is valuable experience. And just becoming a mom myself, like it's the hardest job ever. <laughs> 
I have an almost two year old now. It's the hardest job I'll ever have. Um, so, you know, other hiring managers, they're going to recognize that. Um, and, um, you know, if, if you apply for a company and you explain to them that you took time off to raise your children, um, and they don't like that, maybe it's not the company that you want to work for anyway. Um, so just always remember that you're also interviewing the company. Um, and as military spouses, we're looking for that flexibility. We're looking, you know, because stuff comes up in our life that's pretty volatile, um, you know, deployments, all that good stuff. Um, but, but yeah, so interview the company itself. You know, flexibility is becoming more... Um, it's happening more. You could find organizations that will offer you the flexibility that you need. Um, yeah. So just, you know, do your research on the organizations that you're applying for. And then in your cover letter, you could mention, um, you know, took time off for so-and-so, but then also there's so many different resources out there. If you feel like you have, uh, maybe you're doubting your skills. Hey, you took time off, do some training. Um, Hire Heroes USA, we, par we partner with Coursera, who has open hundreds of training um, modules that we, whatever topic, the, the internet is so many things that you could, uh, you know, just learn from the internet and then put, put that on your resume. So in an interview, you can mention, hey, I took time off to do this or that, but I stayed relevant um, through, you know, this training, education, volunteered all that good stuff. And then, uh, Virginia, you mentioned returnships. Returnships, these companies are realizing that, hey, stay-at-home moms, mm -hmm. they're they're awesome. They, they yeah. do the hardest job ever, and they make great hires. So we're going to do these returnship programs. So those are just examples of companies that you want to work for. So take mm -hmm. a look at into, you know, those returnship opportunities. A hundred percent. And you will be surprised how many people support that. I think that also, if you have a gap, like you said, um, caretaking, deployment support, like family, you know, family leave, grief leave. We don't talk about that enough, that that's a huge, important part of being a military family member. Put that on your resume. I think that putting that leave of absence there is important for people to understand because there is this unconscious bias taking place because recruiters were taught by a by another recruiter and another recruiter and there are things that we need to shake off you know that right you're in the field and so i think that adding that is super important putting that on your cover letter and having your cover letter tell a story is important as well um i definitely love what you said about those the special programs and the strength right of that the strength that can be shown with these gaps and the things that you exercise like resilience caretaking super important um so i i, I really appreciate what you said that was definitely a, a, even learning for me as a recruiter right to be always be on the lookout for those things um as a military spouse how important it is to have a social media presence let's talk about specifics that play after your career um, power to fly forum like attendance or LinkedIn or you know being part of the SAC groups that like showcase folks that are looking for jobs that you know everyone now is looking at the feed for these for what we're saying what are our opinions out there right tell me about your point of view on this yeah so I think it's super important to have a social media presence um, if anything LinkedIn and the job search is huge um, you need to have a LinkedIn presence if you are job ser searching. It's only going to help you. They have a really great job board on there. And it's um, if that alone, um, that companies are solely posting positions on LinkedIn, uh, but also just the networking aspect of it. So many people networking um, and just being able to connect with people. And like I said, as a military spouse, I know how hard it is because you're usually moving to a location where you don't have a network. You don't have that physical network of people to, you know, rely on. So now we're in this virtual environment where you can network online and it's great. Yeah. <laughs> so I always recommend, you know, if you apply for a position or say you see a position online that you want to apply for, um, do some creeping, do some stalking, try to find the hiring manager of that position, shoot them a message on LinkedIn. That shows that you are going out of your way. It shows that you're super interested in this role. Um, and you're just a, a name that's not just coming through the computer applicant tracking system. I could put a face to the name and you're taking those extra steps to show that you are a valuable candidate. Um, so networking is huge. 
LinkedIn's huge. Um, and it's just an, another enhancer to your resume is that online social network and that brand. A hundred percent. And I think we cannot, we should lose our fear because worst thing that is going to happen is that we get no response and that's okay. There's someone else who will respond to that, right? We got to kiss a lot of frogs sometimes and that's, that's fine. We're in a place where we can communicate our needs. There's going to be a lot of people willing to support us because I think we're all in this together, especially with all the layoffs taking place. I feel it's brought humanity forth a little bit. And it's fantastic in a way. You know, it's a silver lining of being able to see the power of community. Um, well, we're approaching here the last few minutes and I have two quick questions for you, Kelly. This great conversation has to come to an end and I'm so sad about it. Um, how can networking fast track your job search? And what tips do you have for building and maintaining professional networks? That it kind of plays up a little bit, but let's talk about the depth of what you just mentioned. Yeah, and I think, uh, as I mentioned, LinkedIn, it's huge. Um, if you're uncomfortable with your LinkedIn, um, you need help with it. Hire Heroes USA, that's another aspect that will help with, will help you develop that LinkedIn profile. Um, but yeah, as I just mentioned, just reaching out to different people on LinkedIn, um, Virginia, like don't get this. You mentioned like pe some people aren't going to respond. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're going to send messages and not hear a response. That's okay. Move on. Find someone will respond. Um, if you, you know, try hard enough and the generally people want to help other people. Um, so find that, that person who wants to help you, uh, informational interviews. If you have a company that you're interested in, say Amazon, um, you know, find a recruiter on Amazon, ask for an informational interview, um, you know, learn things about the company that will better present you as a candidate. And then you make that connection with that recruiter and it just could lead to an opportunity. So many opportunities are just um, come about from a just a little message <laughs> that you send. And it's it's pretty cool to see, um, you know, the power of just networking. And I will mention, like, if you're just applying to jobs online, keep in mind, uh, hundreds of people are probably applying to that same job. Um, so you really need to make yourself, um, you know, stand out outside of those hundreds of people. And the great way to do that is just your simple networking. Yeah, 100%. I think that what you have said has brought so much value and I hope that everyone in the audience was able to see it. I know you brought me a ton of value and thank you so much again. Um, I hope that you know you have a great rest of your week and thanks again for your service as a military spouse. Thank you guys for having me. And if anyone wants to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, feel free to do so. All right, thank you.